Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make a doorway to clear out the player's tools whenever they walk through it. So right now I have a player that's holding a simple tool, and then when I have my player walk through the doorway here, you can see as soon as he walks through, it gets rid of the tool. Alright, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Alright, so as far as making the door, I'm going to leave that part up to you. For my door, I just have an outer frame, which is a union of a couple different parts. And then I have an inner part right here. And this is the important part right here. This is what the player is going to touch to clear out the tool. So for this one, what you want to do to make sure the player can walk through it is turn Can Collide off. So under the properties, just look for Can Collide and make sure the check mark is unchecked. You probably want to make it semi-transparent. So also under the properties, look for Transparency. And I have mine set to 0.75, but if you want to make it fully transparent, then you can set it to 1. So the script for this project is going to be on whatever part the player is going to touch to clear out the tools. So this doesn't even have to be a doorway. It can be like a pad or something the player stands on, and it can do the same thing. So whatever part you're going to have the player touch, that's where you're going to add the script to. And we're going to start off the script by making a reference for the part. So in my case, I'm going to say local door is equal to script dot parent. Next, we're going to be making a function that will run whenever the player touches this part. So we're going to say local function. The name of our function can be remove. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass the parameter other part. Inside the function, we're going to start by checking to make sure that whatever other object touches this part here is a humanoid and also a player. So we're going to start with the humanoid part and we're going to say local humanoid is going to be equal to other part dot parent. So if the player touches the doorway, then other part will likely be the player's hand or maybe their torso. And dot parent is going to get the player's model. Inside the player's model, we're going to say colon find first child. And inside the parentheses, we're going to be looking for a humanoid. Next, we're going to be checking to make sure that the object is a player in the game. And we're going to do that by saying local player is equal to game dot players. Inside game dot players, we're going to say find first child. And this time we're going to take other part dot parent. And then from the player model, we're going to get the name. And we're going to be using that to search in game dot players to see if the player exists. To see if those two conditions are met, we're going to say if humanoid and player. What we're going to do in that case is we're going to check the player's hand and also the player's backpack to see if they're holding a tool. And then if we find a tool in either the hand or the backpack, we're going to get rid of it. So we're going to start by saying local in hand. So this is just a variable name. This is going to be equal to other part dot parent. And then inside the player model, we're going to be looking for the tool. So this time we're going to say find first child which is a, inside the parentheses, we're going to put tool. Next, we're going to say local in backpack. And this is going to be equal to player dot backpack. And then inside the backpack, we're going to say the same thing. Find first child, which is a, then tool. After that, we're going to say if in hand. So if we're able to find it in the player's hand, then what we're going to do is we're going to say in hand, which will be storing the tool, and we're going to say colon and destroy. And the next one, we're going to check to see if it was in the player's backpack. So we'll say if in backpack, then we're going to say in backpack, colon, and destroy. And finally, we need to link this function to the touch event. So we're going to say door dot touched, colon, connect. And then the name of the function is remove. All right, so let's go and check it out and make sure it's working. OK, so my player has it in their hand, and I'm going to walk through the doorway. 
okay and we see it didn't work so let's go ahead and check the output and see what the mistakes are and I see that I need a capital W here and I also noticed that I put an extra D so let's go ahead and check it out now and see if it's working with those changes okay so my player has the tool in their hand and I'm going to try to walk through the doorway now and we can see when I do that it removes it from the player's hand so what I'm going to do now is stop the game and I'm going to rerun it, but this time I'm going to unequip the tool so that it goes in the player's backpack. Okay, so I'm going to unequip the tool. So now the tool is in the player's backpack and we can check that by going under players, the player, and inside the backpack you can see the tool. And when the player walks through the doorway, it removes it from the player's backpack and the player no longer has it. All right, so let's say you don't want to destroy the tool, but maybe just put it back to some location. Let's go and take a look at that and see how we can change the script. So what I'm going to do first is just insert a part into the game. And this is the part that I'm going to send the tools back to. So what I'm going to do is locate that part and just rename it to something else. So I renamed that part to tool spot. So whenever the player walks through the doorway, instead of destroying the tool, it's going to teleport the tool over to this spot over here. The first thing we're going to do inside the script is make a reference for the tool spot. And we can do that by saying local tool spot is going to be equal to game dot workspace dot tool spot. And down here, rather than destroying the tool, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say in hand dot parent is equal to game dot workspace. And then we're going to say in hand dot position is going to be equal to tool spot dot position. And then we want to spawn it a little bit above the part. So what we're going to do is we're going to say plus vector three dot new. And then we're going to say zero comma five, which is the Y position, which will make it go up a little bit. And then we'll say comma zero. And then we're going to do the same thing for this one down here. So we're going to change the first part to dot parent is equal to game dot workspace. And then in backpack dot position is going to be equal to the same thing we did before. So I'll just copy it and paste it down here. All right, so let's go ahead and try it out and make sure it's working. Okay, so my player has a tool and I'm going to walk through the doorway. And you can see when I do that, there was an error. So if you look under the output, it says position is not a valid member of tool. So what we're going to do to fix that is instead of trying to teleport the tool's position, we're going to teleport the handle part that's inside of it. So for this part, we're going to say in hand dot handle dot position. And then we'll do the same thing for this part. We'll say in backpack dot handle dot position. And now let's go and check it out and see if it's working now. Okay, so if I have my player walk through the doorway, and let's go ahead and check over to the spot over here, and we can see that my tool is over here, and let's go ahead and pick it up again, and this time I'm going to unequip the tool, so it's in the player's backpack, and we can check to see if this is working too. And if we go back to the tool spot, we can see that our tool has returned to this location. Alright, so that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.